When you think of influential Chinese businessmen, Jack Ma's name and story would probably be the first that come to your mind. This would come naturally, as Jack Ma is the creator of Alibaba, the e-commerce giant that has reshaped retail as we know it. Also, there's the fact that he's probably the most prominent Chinese businessman in the world today. However, did you know that there's another man who's risen up to become one of China's richest? In fact, he's become so successful in his chosen field that he's become even richer than Jack Ma and has cemented himself as China's 10th richest man. Today, we're going to be talking about Wang Wei and how he was able to accomplish such a feat. I'm going to give you the full story on who Wang Wei is, what he is most known for, and how he was able to earn billions and billions of dollars. As you all might already know, I enjoy having a good history lesson. So, let's take a look at Wang Wei's early life to figure out how eventually ended up becoming a billionaire. Actually, we're in for a pretty short history lesson because not much is known about Wang Wei's early life. Let me condense what I've found. Wang Wei was born in October back in 1970 in Shanghai, China. According to various news sources, Wang Wei's father was a Russian language translator for the Chinese Air Force, while his mother was a professor at a university. When Wang Wei was seven years old, the entire family moved to Hong Kong, where Wang Wei studied for both primary and secondary schooling. Now, after graduating high school, our man of the hour did not enroll in a university. He, instead, went straight to work in the manufacturing sector. Apparently, Wang Wei began working for a Hong Kong uncle. Now, as a sidebar, let me tell you that in most, if not all, Asian cultures, it is customary to call those who are in the same age range as your parents as auntie or uncle, even if you're not related by blood. There are also terms you can call people who are slightly older than you. By doing so, you are showing respect to that individual. Now, whether or not Wang Wei was related to that uncle, I'm not really sure but it was through this path that he eventually found himself working in a small printing shop in the city of Shundae, which is located in the province of Guangdong. However, while working, Wang Wei encountered a recurring problem. He was in dire need of a reliable delivery service. I've personally experienced logistical issues when it comes to sending things to my friends, and that's with all the available delivery options today. I know you've struggled with it too at some point. However, back then, there weren't that many delivery options around for people to use it was almost impossible to have something delivered on the same day, especially in China. Naturally, if you're a business person who has to rely on deliveries to close your deals, you lose valuable time and money trying to get things done. This is what Wang Wei experienced. In fact, it's what sparked his grand idea. Apparently, Wang Wei had to send out samples of their work back to Hong Kong for their clients to review and offer feedback on, but he couldn't find an efficient way to deliver the parcels. He became concerned with the lack of available delivery options to proceed with his deliveries. Not to mention, he needed to send out more and more deliveries, and he couldn't plan it out because of logistical issues. In business, there's something that you call a pain point. A. Pain point is something that prospective customers struggle with and need a solution for. Wang Wei's problem is an example of a pain point, and he was certain that other people were struggling with it too. That's why he set out to create a delivery and logistics company that would blow all others out of the water and change the state of Chinese logistics forever. Wang Wei developed a multinational delivery and logistics company, which is known today as SF Express. However, before we go any further, let's dial it back a little and explore the socio-political conditions of the area at the time that Wang Wei set up his logistics business. China was only beginning to adopt a more open trade policy with the rest of the world, so it was an opportune time to set up such a business because goods were able to move more freely. An area called the Pearl River Delta, which connected major cities like Shenzhen and Guangzhou, stimulated trade between the area and Hong Kong. That's why in 1993, which was considered to be the height of China's economic reform, Wang Wei partnered with five of his friends to begin Shunfeng Express. However, he needed some capital, so his dad had to loan him 100,000 yen, or 13,000 US dollars, to get them started. So, with capital intact, they laid the groundwork for setting up their business and began telling people about their delivery service. But, there was one teeny tiny problem. Private courier businesses were illegal in China. In fact, they didn't get legalized until over a decade later in 2009. The only legal way to transport items and goods was through China's national post office system, which was, sad to say, 
becoming an inefficient method for sending and receiving parcels and packages. It took forever for people to get their packages. Because of the legal restrictions, SF Express was in what we call a grey area, which is honestly not a great place for any business to be in. So, naturally, Wang Wei came up with the only logical solution to his problem. He personally shuttled and transported packages, mainly suitcases and backpacks, across the Hong Kong border to get the deliveries to their respective recipients. He would work 15 to 16 hours a day just going back and forth. I imagine this must have been exhausting. Imagine traveling for hours on end, lugging heavy packages behind you. But, he had a dream, for SF Express, a dream to make it one of the largest courier services in the country. Now, he can say his dream has turned into a reality. Today, SF Express is the second largest and most prominent courier service in China. Wang Wei himself personally controlled 99.99% of SF Express for 20 years, and he made it a point to avoid getting funds from external sources. He didn't want to be tied up with other business entities. In fact, venture capitalists were willing to pay up to $70,000 per to bounty hunters who could set up a business meeting with the secretive Wang Wei. He also wasn't too keen on getting featured by the media, which might be surprising considering how prominent his business had gotten. However, Wang Wei has a good reason for keeping himself low profile. This is what Wang Wei had to say in his feature on e-commerce. I believe in a higher power, I think, a person's success has nothing to do with talent. Success is related to doing good deeds. Having a lot of money isn't something to brag about, nor is having talent. Being successful and making money is just a matter of fate. That's why I don't think people should brag about achievements in their career. Being low-key also brings benefits from a management perspective. If employees don't recognize you, you are able to dig deeper and get to understand the real situation. Today, Wang Wei has a staggering net worth of $39 billion, and he currently owns 60% of SF Express's shares. These make him one of the richest men in the world. And let's not forget about SF Express. The company is doing pretty well. It has a revenue of 21.65 billion yen, has employed over 100,000 individuals, and has operations across the globe. Currently, it is working on expanding its operations to more countries. From working as an illegal deliveryman to being a multi-billion dollar tycoon, Wang Wei's got it made. Love it or hate it, it can't be denied that social media was a whole lot more entertaining with content from TikTok in the mix. Nowadays, you can basically find content on TikTok that covers, well, basically anything under the sun. Now, you might be wondering who exactly is behind this social media giant. I mean, certainly, the founder of TikTok should be raking in tons of money by now. Especially considering that the platform has over 500 million monthly active users. Well, to put it simply, yes he is. Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in the video up on your screen now, so click away, sit back, and relax. See you in the next video.